Good morning everyone. In this video I'm going to read to you my book that I've been working on for a couple of years. And it's ready to show the world and that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I hope you really enjoy it and become interested in it by listening to this. It's called The Third Face, a Multiple Personalities Novel. The crimson stone scorched the other's shoes, burning away at the soles. He cursed! He'd forgotten to change them again. He stopped and pulled them both off, feeling his dark red feet. It didn't hurt to stand there barefoot, but he knew he wasn't supposed to. Any amount of heat could throw off his balance. He focused his mind on his goal. If he thought about this instability, he wouldn't be able to control it anymore. Too late. Icicles formed on his toes, soothing the pain he hadn't been aware of. Frozen walkway spread beneath him, pulling at the immense coldness stored in his body. All at once, the miraculous ice melted, flowing down the passage as water, as it usually did. Next came the overheating. After pushing too much of his cold out to his environment, it had dissipated. Now there was almost nothing left to protect him from the heat. Hell would try to destroy him again. He released as much energy as he could, forming a bright light ahead of him. His source of darkness took this chance to become his center. There was all these different powers coexisting inside him that made his body unable to control them. Leo tried desperately to bring the light and the water back into his small body. If he could balance himself again, he'd be safe for the moment. No good. He sighed as the energies he'd really spread beyond his reach. This was the best day to go in for now. Unbearably hot, full of a deep darkness. The demons below would take advantage of it. That was the least of his worries for now. He ran down the passage before anything else could go wrong. His blue eyes flicking to the different tunnels off to the side. All of them were made of the same red and black stone with its hideous glow. He suddenly darted to the left on the 23rd tunnel as he deliberately counted. This was where he knew the next helpless victim was being held. In a split second, a demon down the passage, a dark green beast with great muscles and horns, leapt forward on all fours. Leo couldn't react. Its huge forearm bashed into his whole body all at once. He felt the impact in the front, then the back as he hit the floor. The behemoth covered Leo's vision as it bore over him. Its yellow, foot-long teeth opened in a merciless roar. Leo's hands burst with a blinding light, burning straight into the thing's white eyes. It hissed and reached for his face, mustering an impossible force in his child's body. Leo smashed to its elbow. Its arm jerked and its claws plunged right into its face. He didn't take the time to see the aftermath. This thing had been prepared. They were ready for him. He moved past its huge form, hoping he'd done it in. Yeah, right. The door into his target's home was just ahead. The iron door was locked. Leo quickly pulled out a specialized clamp and ripped the knob and out of its socket. The door fell open and he stepped in quietly, though he'd never be heard over the exchange of curses a room away. He'd heard it before, a child pleading desperately for a demon not to hurt him. The kid continued even though he knew it wouldn't help, or at least it told Leo where they were. He looked around for anything to use as a weapon. He had to be quick to avoid harming the captive. A desk, a filing cabinet. Even he couldn't use things that heavy. The chairs in the room were made of cloth and poles and would collapse on impact. The lamp was equally fragile. No, he needed something solid. His eyes rested on the vacuum cleaner. It seems funny that someone like this would even bother keeping their place clean, he mused. It was bigger than he was, but... With some effort, he hefted it upward. He carefully flipped it upside down and over his shoulder. Against the far wall in the next room was the figure of a small human boy, his face and hair covered in blood. The demon, facing away from him, raised a red claw toward the child, his black ponytail swinging slightly. That could be me when I grow up, but I know I'll never be like him. Leo moved in carefully behind the demon. With a cry and a burst of strength, he swung the vacuum up. A mighty crash split the demon's head. It stood for a moment before falling to its knees. Leo could tell the first hit hadn't been enough. It made sense. 
He knew the demon's strength all too well. After all, it was his own. Breathing heavily, Leo lifted the vacuum for another blow. Die! Suddenly the demon was on his back screaming and the boy leaned over him, growling incoherently. The child's hand smashed into the face below, cutting into the demon's eye with overgrown fingernails. Leo stood back in wonder and put the vacuum down as the former victim pummeled his captor over and over, with the blood splashing all over his face, his entire body forcing out years of pent-up rage. The child looked like a demon himself. It was then that Leo wondered if he'd been too late. This one had already been turned into one of them. No turning back, he said to himself as he breathed out all this shock. That's enough, he yelled, stepping over toward the child to let him know he was there. The kid looked up at him, suddenly halting. It's okay, Leo said. This is the end of things here. It'll be so much different up there. You can be happy there. Then he led the boy by the hand, back where he'd come in, to the gate used by countless innocents to live a new life. Everything had gone according to procedure, but even though the little boy wouldn't tell Leo his name, they'd meet again.